So now in this video, we're gonna do the uh, basic properties of the op amp. That's the schematic symbol, and a lot of them, if there's only one or two within the integrated circuit, are in a uh, dual inline package like this with uh, eight pins right there. We're gonna use the LM358 as our example. So there's a uh, different pin layouts for uh, different ones. We're gonna focus on the LM358, but this is a common pin layout you may see for dual op amps. So the LM358 has an op amp on that side and an op amp on that side. That's why it's a dual op amp. There's two of them within them. So there's five terminals of interest. Of course you need two of them to power the op amp. So these two op amps share those uh, two terminals. We got the positive supply there. And then we have ground here. So for a single supply, the op amp, LM358 I should say, is either a single or a dual supply op amp, you can use either of them. So single supply op amp, you have the positive side of a power supply and the negative side of a power supply. The negative supply of the power side is ground. That's the lowest voltage that uh, you use. If it's a dual supply, that means ground is a halfway point. And so there's the yeah, positive supply and then a voltage uh, lower than ground. Usually it's an equal difference right there. So if you got uh, five positive, five negative, there's a 10 volt difference and then ground is the halfway point. So you'd have that negative voltage there if ground is the halfway point. But uh, most people I think use ground as the negative side of the circuit. So in any case, these power pins may not even be on the schematic, but always be aware you have to power it. Now, we have, uh, let's do the output first. The output, it either connects as close as it can to the positive supply and it usually falls short. It does with the LM358. Maybe if you got five volts, maybe it outputs four. I don't know the exact voltage, but it falls a bit short. It can also go all the way down to the negative supply, which is ground in this case, zero volts. It can make a really good connection directly to ground there. You can get about zero volts out there. Now you can get anywhere in between those two voltages. The way that you set the output voltage depends on the inputs. So again, sometimes the plus may be up there, sometimes the minus will be down there when you're building a circuit from a schematic. Make sure you pay close attention to that. You don't want to uh, connect wiring here that you think is for the non-inverting input. That's the inverting input. When that wiring should be where the inverting input is. So always pay close attention. You can see that uh, the component there, we got the output on top, the inverting input below it and the non-inverting input uh, below that. So that's always the way it is on the integrated circuit. Whereas on the schematic, the non-inverting input might be above the inverting input. The main thing to know about the inputs, first off, they just look at voltage. Both of them have high impedance, which means they don't let current flow through them, even as you get a relatively high voltage across them. It's the same as very high resistance. So. Impedance is really anything that limits current flow. But in any case, they just look at the voltages. So now the output, the uh, voltage at the output either goes up or down, depending on the inputs. So we'll uh, shuffle over here a little bit. So when the non-inverting input voltage is higher than the inverting input voltage, then the output voltage rises. So if they never equalize, it will just rise up as high of a voltage as it can output. So that'll be close to the positive supply voltage. Now, when the uh, non-inverting input voltage is lower than the inverting input voltage, so a lower voltage there, the voltage at the output drops. And if they never equalize, it just goes all the way to ground. So again, that's what we're gonna do in this video. But future videos, we're gonna look at how to equalize them and then you'll get a set voltage either above or below the halfway point. And really quickly, we'll do a demonstration of a comparator circuit. So we're just using the op amp on the left side right there. The output here, the top pin on the left, we got one resistor going to the red LED, long lead anode, short lead the cathode. You can see that goes to ground. So that's how you know that's a high output right there. It's probably about four volts or whatever it goes to because we're using five volts and uh, there are zero volts right there. We got the difference. The blue LED is coming from the positive supply. So right now, the non-inverting input is floating. I can 
do uh, different things to uh, mess up its input so it builds up a charge so it holds a voltage if uh, nothing is changing it but in any case that is coming from the positive supply long lead the anode towards positive short lead the cathode to negative to the output there so when the blue LED is lit up you know that the output is low so we just did that here is the non-inverting input as I said when the voltage is lower than the inverting input that puts the output low and we got the blue LED lit up so now we will uh, zoom in and now we're in an indeterminate state and uh, so it's favoring a high output right now for whatever reason that's a 10,000 ohm resistor to the positive supply and then a 10,000 ohm resistor to the negative supply at the inverting input so that's two and a half volts right there so when we take our jumper and go back to the non-inverting input zero volts is lower than 2.5 volts so we have a low output when we go to the positive supply then 5 volts is higher than 2.5 volts and so we have a high output now we can quickly shuffle these and have the opposite situation right here so we're gonna move that down real quick and didn't really wanna go into that slot but now we're in there so the fixed resistors the voltage divider of uh, 2.5 volts are at the non-inverting input now I got the inverting input right here and it's floating right now this is why you don't leave inputs floating but it, it won't really damage anything but it gives you a, a false signals there so now we go to the uh, red line there the positive supply and we have a low output because the blue LED is lit up and we got the opposite effect there right there now the red LED is light up so that's the nice thing about op amps all you gotta do is uh, shuffle some things around you have a quite different circuit they're uh, really easy to use so in any case I'm going to end it there. There's a lot more to learn about op amps. Mostly you learn them by reading, but I'm going to do a lot of demonstration videos too. So hope they help. Make sure you check out the videos I'm posting on the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description. But uh, just uh, checking out any of those links or watching more videos is very helpful. Thanks to everybody that does that. I'll see you in the next video.